It is April 10th, 2017. I received a few emails over the last couple of days, and the, the gist of the emails that I was receiving was dealing with this climate chaos, and there were a few emails asking about the tilt of the earth or this pole axis drift. Well, I do report on this as the data does come out, and just recently, some of this information came out, and I do want to go over it with you. And we also have some other information that is going to be pretty vital. So let's just go ahead and jump into the axis, the pole axis drift. And I'm going to just go ahead and set this up so you can see this full screen. Now, this information comes out every single month. This data is going back all the way to 2013. And it's very easy to read. If you follow my cursor, you'll see this is all color coded. And this is going to show you what has been happening with the Earth since 2013. So as the records started to be kept in 2013, you'll see the pole axis drift of the Earth. Then in red, you're going to see 2014. In the light blue, 2015. In the green, 2016. And now in the darker color blue, you'll see the first couple of months of 2017. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look over here, see where my cursor is. The Earth doesn't spin perfectly on its axis. It has a little bit of a wobble. Well, over the course of the last several years, this wobble, as they call it, has, has gotten more intense. Now, the actual root cause, scientists who are basically just mouthpieces out trying to sell their books will give you all kinds of reasons, but not the real reason. It all goes into climate change. And basically, they'll go in front of Congress or the House of Representatives here in the United States, and they'll give their data. But in all actuality, all they want to do is sell books. Now, one gentleman just recently went in front of the House of Representatives and Congress and made a complete fool out of himself. But yet this guy is a professor at Penn State University and basically Congress didn't respect anything that he had to say. And during his testimony, there were several arguments that erupted because he was just not being professional and they caught him in several lies. But we'll get into that information here very shortly. But as you can see, going into 2016 through the entire year in the green right here, the wobble of the earth became pretty extreme compared to what it was in 2015. Now, the first couple of months of 2017, we were actually following the direct path that we took on 2016. And then in January of this year, something occurred. We started moving back into the same path that we were following in 2015. What is the root cause of such a dramatic change? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we absolutely think 100% that our current situation in the inner solar system and with the presence of a brown dwarf star or black star, whatever you want to call it, this object is very powerful and it will wreak havoc on the earth. It does have the ability to increase or decrease this wobble by tugging on the earth's north and south pole. Now, some of these individuals that go and testify in front of Congress with this whole climate chaos and climate change. You know, they come in there with their data and they blame it on this and they blame it on that over the past several years. But in all actuality, they really don't have an answer. Now, this gentleman, Michael Mann, went in front of Congress and delivered his mouthpiece information and they didn't buy it simply because he doesn't have any credibility, even though he is a scientist and a professor at Penn State University, 
he basically went in front of them and lied about what is happening. NASA came out with their own version of why the Earth is wobbling so severely, and they blamed it on the lack of water over in a certain area of the Earth, basically causing it to be unstable. So there's too much water on one side of the Earth and not enough water on the other side. So therefore, it would create a severe wobble, causing this wobble to increase. So I'm thinking to myself after reading this NASA and JPL report and then listening to this this bozo Michael Mann, I mean uh, I, I don't even I don't even begin to understand how this guy right here, Michael Mann em, embarrasses himself before Congress. This is the guy from Penn State. And th they basically called him a charlatan. And when you know, when you go down and you read the information, they call him the climate change evangelist. But in all actuality, yeah, maybe the guy does some research and blah, blah, blah. And this is just very recent. Okay, this just came out March 30th, 2017. Okay, a few weeks ago. But when you really take a look at these guys, they're mouthpieces. Look right here. These are the books that these people write. They write books. They're authors. Yes, they may hold scientific degrees. Yes, they may teach at universities. But in all actuality, they are very simply mouthpieces. And they have an agenda. And that agenda is to receive more money from the federal government for research at their universities where they work. They bring in the money. Then they make more money. Then he writes books. And he makes cash. But he went in front of Congress and absolutely embarrassed himself. They even referred to him in the article and in Congress, one of the uh, representatives referred to him as a troll. I couldn't believe that when I read this information that they actually referred to him as a climate change troll because of the way he operates and his wishy-washy back and forth data. And then, you know, we have other individuals that have been brought on to debunk our physicist. Well, here we go. Once again, this Mr. Brian Koberlein or Koberlein, you know, once again, you know, he's more interested in selling himself and selling his, his books that are almost $70 for a book. And he comes out and he makes one blog statement about Nibiru and Planet X and just basically says it's all garbage. It doesn't exist. But yet the man does not produce any credible evidence, no research at all. And later on today at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to have our physicist back on. Uh, she wrote a very, very complicated paper that's full of mathematics. So we asked her if she could please come on and explain this in her terms so we can understand it. And this is going to be dealing with the increase in interior temperature of the earth. And that will be the root cause of the earthquake activity and the volcanic activity that we've been seeing around the globe. So, ladies and gentlemen, be very careful of the video information that you're watching on YouTube. If you happen to come across any of these videos that are being produced by these troll organizations, because... They are literally hiring and using material from these mouthpieces. That's all that these people are. They're mouthpieces wanting to sell books and get more funding for this bogus research at the universities and technical schools where they work. If they actually went down to it and decided to do some real research, they would start running into brick walls like we do having information denied to us, you know, trickery and data missing. And, you know, we all know what that refers to. Uh, you know, two weeks ago, the whole entire situation revolving around our magnetosphere, um, the data being replaced by NASA was just, in my eyes, an absolute crime. But what can you do about it? You can't do anything about it. Now, the data that you were just looking at as far as the the pole axis drift, 
This information was very fresh. It just came out Saturday, April 8th, 2017. And we keep very, very close eye on this information as it comes out. Now, I was actually thinking that we were going to start heading outward past the line that was produced throughout 2016. But I was wrong. And looking at the data, we have taken a very sharp turn inward in this, this pole axis drift. And then you say to yourself, okay, well, what does this have to do with the climate? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if the earth is wobbling severely, it is going to change the weather patterns around the world, change them very, very drastically. I'm really not buying NASA's version of this, that there's too much water on one side of the earth and not enough on the other. They should be embarrassed for putting that information out there. And, you know, other people like this Michael Mann, I mean, they don't even respect him uh, within Congress and our own government. But yet he's out there making a complete fool of himself and has no real data on this climate change because he wants people to believe his information. And it's just basically some theories. There really isn't any cold, hard evidence other than this pole axis drift has increased steadily over the past five years. Now it seems that we have drifted back the other way, the possibilities of a magnetic connection with this brown dwarf is now yanking us in the opposite way. So there is pretty much, pretty much a lot of data out there moving towards what we're talking about. And we're going to be going over some of this information with our physicist. And I'm going to ask her if she can actually look into this a little further and help us understand what is exactly going on. And dealing with the jet stream, this gentleman, Mr. Michael Mann, he started talking all about the jet stream and the reason why we're having these very, very severe weather patterns around the world. Well, after listening to him, I just really didn't agree because if you take a look at our jet stream, ladies and gentlemen, it has completely turned into two jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, I'm not making this up. What you're looking at is current, up to date, right now. So literally, you have one jet stream traveling across the United States and another one right below it moving across Mexico. If you want to see something even more erratic, just take a look at this. I mean, it almost looks like a massive cyclone or hurricane. I've never seen anything like this before. You know, and what is directly causing this? Well, if the earth is being tugged on and that wobble has become more and more severe and then... In 2017, the first three and four months of the, of the year, it has bounced back considerably. Well, that's going to cause more of this climate chaos. And I mean, having two jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere is absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like it before. Let's take a look at the Southern Hemisphere and the South Pole. Pretty well defined, but very, very erratic, very erratic. And again, you know, I'm not a climatologist, I'm not a meteorologist, but I've been watching weather for at least 20 years. Living in South Florida for 22 years, you got very, very used to watching the weather and dealing with hurricanes. But if you can take a look very closely here, you're seeing two jet streams that have formed in the Southern Hemisphere as well as the Northern Hemisphere. You know, I would just love to hear this Dr. Michael Mann give us his thoughts on why we have two jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere and why do we have two jet streams in the Southern Hemisphere. They talk about the poles, North and South, heating up. Well, if the Earth is tilting a little bit more than normal towards the Sun and as the rotation of the Earth continues and we have this seasonal change, don't you think that this tilt would actually expose the North Pole and the South Pole to the sun, therefore heating it up? Wow. It seems pretty basic, ladies and gentlemen, but the bottom line is, once again, 
we have these mouthpieces out there, and that's exactly what I'm going to call them. They're mouthpieces. If you're going to get out there and you're going to write books and you're going to go in front of Congress and they're going to laugh at you, then basically you really can't take these people seriously. And whenever you were, uh, excuse me, whenever I was looking at this article, you know, I started to laugh because there are portions of this article where he actually gets into a little bit of an argument with one of the Congress women and she basically tells him right where to go and she starts quoting things that you know, he's done and she basically outed him right in the middle of this congressional hearing. And you can go ahead and read this. All you have to do is just Google this guy's name, Michael Mann, two ends at, at the end of his last name, and just maybe throw in the word climate in there. And you'll find the guy and you will find a bunch of discrediting information. And again, there are factions and organizations that are using these mouthpieces simply to make you believe their agenda. And their agenda, ladies and gentlemen, is to make you think that everything's fine. This is all normal. This is all being caused by man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's not being caused by man. We have a very serious issue in the inner solar system, and that much is a fact. You obviously see the massive cover-up in information around the globe. And now, once again, we're seeing troop movements all over the United States. And me personally, I don't think this has anything to do with this so-called war that is, what is this, supposed to be World War III? Ladies and gentlemen, war does not, it does not do anything. It does not help any cause whatsoever. But for governments, War is good. They spend money and they seek out and try to conquer for their own agendas. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, 2.30 p.m. today, Eastern Time, we're going to have our physicist on a live stream hangout on the Planet X News channel. And again, we are going to be discussing her recent report on what is heating up the internal core of the earth, which does lead to this increase in volcanic activity as well as earthquake activity. So don't miss out. This is Scott from Planet X News and the Nibiru channel. Thank you for watching. Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News. It is April 10th, 2017. I received a few emails over the last couple of days and the, the gist of the emails that I was receiving was dealing with this climate chaos and there were a few emails asking about the tilt of the earth or this pole axis drift. Well, I do report on this as the data does come out and just recently some of this information came out and I do want to go over it with you and we also have some other information that is going to be pretty vital. So let's just go ahead and jump into the axis, the pole axis drift. And I'm going to just go ahead and set this up so you can see this full screen. Now, this information comes out every single month. This data is going back all the way to 2013. And it's very easy to read. If you follow my cursor, you'll see this is all color coded. And this is going to show you what has been happening with the Earth since 2013. So as the records started to be kept in 2013, you'll see the pole axis drift of the earth. Then in red, you're going to see 2014. In the light blue, 2015. In the green, 2016. And now in the darker color blue, you'll see the first couple of months of 2017. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look over here, see where my cursor is. The Earth doesn't spin perfectly on its axis. It has a little bit of a wobble. Well, over the course of the last several years, this wobble, as they call it, has, has gotten more intense. Now, the actual root cause, scientists who are basically just mouthpieces out trying to sell their books 
will give you all kinds of reasons, but not the real reason. It all goes into climate change. And basically, they'll go in front of Congress or the House of Representatives here in the United States, and they'll give their data. But in all actuality, all they want to do is sell books. Now, one gentleman just recently went in front of the House of Representatives and Congress